Welcome to Acorn to Oak with Penny Quail Pierce and co-host Matthew Donaghy. Within each acorn, there is the DNA that strives to be a mighty oak tree. All it needs to reach its potential for greatness is to be activated. You are the acorn. On this show, we will share with you the tools and guidance you need to grow into the person you are meant to be. And now your host, Penny Quail Pierce and co-host Matthew Donaghy. Hi, good evening and welcome to the show. It's uh, after having three weeks off, it's uh, really good to be back and um, alive and kicking. Um, you know, very much over the last three weeks, it's been a, a challenging time for me, but it's been challenging and I have learnt a lot and I have grown a lot and I have uh, had all sorts of different insights, which I hope to, you know, Matthew and I will discuss with you this evening. But it's, uh, I wanted to just spend one uh, minute um, saying thank you so much to Adam Weller, who stepped in and was co-host for us for three weeks. So just, uh, I just wanted to acknowledge him and thank him for doing that and give, um, Matthew a chance to say hello before I launch off <laughs> into talking. So uh, just handing over to Matthew for a minute. Yeah, so good, good evening or good afternoon. Um, hope everybody's well. Um, I'm really looking forward to the show because um, although I've spoken to Penny, it's it's um, I know very much before when we've spoken about pathologies, you, you're going to hear a lot of stuff that baffles your mind this evening so i i'm really looking forward to to hearing penny's take on how a what what a normal person would consider a a huge deal actually could be something you don't expect it to be um mm. so i'm really looking forward to sort of hearing about it as well so i think um i think you know it is and don't get me wrong uh, I, I don't want to uh, diss anybody's story of, of uh, pathology that they've been through. It's just that no. sometimes we're told an awful lot and we're given an awful lot of information that can actually be quite misleading. And, um, okay, so I'm in a particular situation here where I was a cardiothoracic intensive care sister so this is my was my area of expertise and when i was first told that i would need to have an aortic valve replacement um you know there was a feeling of, of dread absolute dread uh, of going oh my god it's something i know about this is not something i'm going to go in with without having my eyes wide open. And it was for a little bit of um, drama before uh, I actually went for surgery was waiting for, to have an angiogram, um, which is basically sticking in some dye and having a look to, at the heart chambers. Um, and obviously I needed to have that done um, before having the operation. And this was all uh, um, shrouded in a little bit of drama of trying to get things done and eventually having to change cardiologists and go to a different centre in Plymouth, which was not near the hospital I was going to be having the operation at. But it, it got all got sorted and I was admitted into hospital. Um, but it was the pre-terrors. Uh, I should say, or the mind, or your mindset of, oh my God, I know exactly what's going to happen. This is could be extremely painful. It could be fatal. It, you know, uh, any kind of um, general anaesthetic has has those risks, and therefore keeping your mind so you're not in terror all of the time. And I reached out to use homeopathy for that and was taking 
aconite in very large doses so that I would actually have some decent rest before um, going for the operation. Uh, luckily, I was first on the list, so I was obviously being nil by mouth was not going to you know be too worrying to me and they were going to give me an oral um pre-met uh early in the morning so that is going to take you off onto a little bit of la la land for for want of another way of putting it um uh, but i took major amounts of arnica before going into the operation and arnica an awful lot of people heard, have heard from. It is the thing to give to somebody uh, homeopathically when they're going to have trauma. And this was pr to preempt the trauma that my physical body was going to go through when, of course, they crack open your chest and they literally saw through your, your sternum to open up the chest so that they can get to your heart. Which, you know, just about, you know, makes you go cold, <laughs> throw out a cold sweat <laughs> just thinking about it. Yeah. And so I had taken, I made sure that I had taken that when I uh, had the pre-med given to me by the hospital staff. And then obviously went down for the operation. And the operation is anything from two and a half to three hours because they put you on bypass. And one of the reasons that I'd taken the Arnica was because of the cellular trauma when you've got someone cutting through a sternum and they, then they are physically using their hands and obviously surgical equipment to put you on bypass so all of your blood is taken out of your body your uh, body cools down so that you're you're really hypothermic and so you get very 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 cold and then obviously during the operation they stop the heart so they can repair the uh, the valve and the you know obviously taking out a valve from the heart is trauma putting in a new one and stitching it in place and making sure obviously that the the seal is uh, around the valve is absolutely 100 percent pucker for another way of putting it absolutely patent um and then obviously the surgeons then making sure that the heart uh, restarts and they start building you up um, and bringing you back um, fr from uh, obviously you, you go into the intensive care unit where you're ventilated and um, on, on, on uh, a ventilator you're being uh, monitored constantly and everything is you know brought back and you're slowly brought out of the general anesthetic so that they take out the ET tube and you start breathing on your own etc so all of that as you can imagine um it's it is preparing yourself and realizing that that is what's going to be happening and and how do you prepare for that you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, you know, in order to get yourself uh, ready for it, but also ready so for your loved ones and your friends and your family. So very much it was important for me to make sure I had a living will so that if something did happen that was catastrophic, I wasn't going to be left as a cabbage. So putting in things like a power of attorneys, living will, a power of attorney, making sure that I left um, letters for my husband and for my son, who's just coming up for nearly three years old, and I'd done him a video just in case. Uh, 
all of these things may seem like overkill. But the most important thing for me was that if something did happen, it would be of the least amount of trauma for my family. So we had made the decision to move down into to the West Country and I li live in Bude now in Cornwall, which is just an hour away from my husband's family, to make sure that if something did happen and he was left there holding the bag with a three-year-old son, that he would get the support that he needed. And you know, it's looking at it and doing it in a sensible fashion. And I know you guys have heard me say a plethora of times that, you know, the six P's is how I work. You know, planning and preparation prevent piss poor performance. And it's so true for me. You know, it's how I live my life. Uh, making sure that I have the energetic side of life sorted out, as well as the emotional intelligence, you know, setting up, uh, you know, I'm lucky I have a whole bunch of Reiki practitioners uh, and distance healers who I know who were sending me Reiki and making sure that during the time that I was in surgery that it, this was what was happening. And also uh, my spiritual path, the Self-Realization Fellowship, I was on their prayer list and making sure that I had constant help and support. Uh, the last thing I thought about as I was being given the general anaesthetic was my God and my guru. And therefore I set up the intention of chanting right the way through the operation of God and Guru and Chai Guru, right the way through me being operated on. And I had a real sense, although it wasn't a conscious sense, I had a real sense that I was taken out of my body and I was held in the arms of the divine as this surgery was happening. And I have to um, acknowledge the surgeons for the brilliant job that they did. But it's, you know, it's somewhat like butchery. <laughs> you know, it's literally when you look at it and you just realise the um, what they actually have to do to, to, to get to the space in order to do the work that they needed to do. And I have great respect for them and great respect for the surgeon um, Prof Ori uh, for doing what he did. Um, I, when I came out of and I um, returned to my physical body um, after waking up from um, obviously the anaesthetic and also the um, uh, I hope my brain has just gone, but um, uh, waking up from, from obviously all the drugs that I was getting uh, and uh, the relaxants that I was getting, um, you know, you suddenly realise the impact that the physical body has taken. And this is when you go back again to the energetics of the situation and realising that you need to start that healing process as fast as you possibly can and how to minimize the amount of cellular trauma uh, memories and suppressions that you have um, had during that two hour two and a half hour three hour uh, traumatic experience of surgery and it's looking at it and realizing that Anything you can start doing straight away. My husband, uh, Luke, came in to see me whilst I was in the intensive care and re gave me another dose of very, very high arnica, high vibrational arnica. Uh, and he just put it on my chin so it would be absorbed into my skin and so that I would have a second dose. And it was later on that day I managed to give myself a third dose of Arnica, which um, 
very, very much helped, I think, at the very, very beginning of just dealing with that impact um, of the trauma. So I just wanted to uh, let Matthew have, uh, because obviously he uh, was, in some ways, was quite involved in this because he was very much part of the healing tree, should I say, or the Reiki, the Reiki team of people sending me energy. So just wanted to hand over to him so he could uh, put in his thoughts. Yeah, um, what what really came up for me on the, on the comment you made that I think really, really makes the point was it, it's sort of covering all bases. And I think when when people aren't, aren't aware of actually there's there's lots of different options out there where you can sort of help the process um, very much. You're not saying it, it's not going to be sort of difficult at times, but it's preparing to make things as easy as possible um and i know very much penny's very real um wh when we were talking about it and it's sort of sort of owning how you feel because there's going to be parts of you that obviously are scared um and they'll and, and it's just sort of trying to stay present rather than buy into the the the, the fear um and i think it it could benefit so many people if they were sort of aware that there are different things you can do as uh, as well as just sort of mentally preparing um where you were using homeopathy i think it, it, i think it if i was in that position i think anything that made that process easier why wouldn't you do it sort of thing mm -hmm. um and i think a lot of that comes from just sort of like a, a, almost like a lack of knowledge or just maybe someone hasn't explained it in the right way. I think some, sometimes there's sort of stigma around something that isn't a chemical drug and given by the doctor. And there's there are other things that you, you, you can do to really assist that do make a big difference. And yeah, very think, much there are a, a, a group of friends. Yeah, I really do think that the, the homeopathy and especially the aconite is a specific homeopathic drug that, or should I say, it's not a drug, it's a, it's a remedy, <laughs> but it's a specific yeah. homeopathic remedy, which is basically given to somebody who thinks they're going to die now, and literally the terror and the horror. Uh, right. And it's that yeah. stage of... Oh my God! I'm just about to. Yeah, um, this is this is really gut wrenching fear, and I yeah, lit and... literally had taken it, had taken the aconite for three nights before the surgery because I knew okay. what was coming yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. So we're just about to have a break, and we'll uh, catch you after the break. Conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Home Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. I'm Kathy Williams, host of Sexy Mom Abundant Life radio show on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. On the show, we explore living abundantly in every area of your life. Ways to let go of limiting patterns and beliefs and to step into the flow of creativity and possibility, knowing you are supported by the universe. We are talking about your life. Ever wonder, is this as good as it gets? No, it could be so much better. At Acorn to Oak, we know you are seeking more happiness, joy, unconditional love, financial freedom, 
passion, and purpose. Find your unique mojo and live an extraordinary life. Want to know more? Contact us at our website, acorntooak.org.uk. One in three adults has prediabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your football buddy, your football buddy, or you, your best man, your worst man, you, your dog walker, your cat jogger. While one in three adults has prediabetes, with early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. So, hi, we're back again. Hi. So, we're basically beginning to talk about how to, you know, start the healing process and minimize the cellular trauma and, you know, the memories are, and the suppressions. Because even though, you know, we're not consciously aware whilst we're under a general anesthetic, of uh, some of uh, the things that are going on around us, um, we are aware of them because hearing is the last sense to go. Uh, so, you know, we actually do, uh, you know, and I've done a couple of processes since um, uh, in recovery just to look at some of the um, suppressions and some of the memories of what people were talking about around me, how to actually minimize that, not worry about um, uh, things that were said and you only heard little bits of it and then therefore may have misinterpreted what was being said at the time. And it's looking at how to process and clear all of those thought forms and judgments and fears from the professionals that were working around you uh, at such an intimate level. I mean, these guys have got their hands inside your body, inside your chest. And energetically, whatever they're thinking about, whether they had a hard time or an argument with their spouse or they're having financial worries or this or that or whatever is deeply embedded inside you for the amount of time that their hands are inside your energetic body mm. and you have to remember that as a you know as an aware person this all needs to be cleared from your energy as well so at, yeah. the, at the very, very beginning, um, obviously, I had an array of homeopathy with me because I am a homeopath. So I was treating myself homeopathically. I was making sure I was out of bed uh, within the first couple of hours. At least I was standing by the edge of the bed or I, you know, luckily at the very beginning, I still had a, a urinary catheter in. But that was removed quite early, which was one of the things that I asked for, because I would uh, prefer to get up and actually start using my body systems again, i.e. using my bladder, using my legs, getting out of the bed. Yes, it wasn't a very good stagger to the, to the ensuite bathroom at the beginning, but I managed it with help. Uh, and the amazing thing that they've changed since I was in the cardiothoracic field was they give you what it actually looks like a bulletproof vest, but it only covers the, the, the top part of your chest and it splints you in because obviously your sternum has been opened and you know, the last thing you want to do is you know, obviously the physiotherapists come round and try and get you to cough. And, you know, literally the first time you cough, you think you're going to split your chest open. Uh, mm. The pain is not great, but then painkillers help with that. But it's making sure that you are then incredibly proactive in your own uh, recovery. 
and I suppose I had, you know, I had a, a little bit of a hand of knowing exactly what was coming. Some of it, as I said, was challenging and not particularly nice, but some of it was just a case of, you know, take a breath and suck it up and get on with it. Because the only way that you're going to start to feel better is to, to take back, to empower yourself and bring the power back so that you can be feel like you're in a little bit of control because the worst thing I think about being in a hospital is this thing that you are disempowered because the power goes to the nursing staff, the medics, the you know auxiliary staff and I actually was very very proactive in taking back the control and taking back um, you know uh, uh, responsibility for my own physical mental emotional and spiritual well-being so I had my little altar in my room which I think they probably all smiled at and thought oh, and we've got a right woofy one here but it was not it wasn't that it was a case of me being able to have eye to eye contact with my gurus whilst I was going through pain and hand the pain back to them because I didn't need to feel it. I didn't need to be crushed by it. And it's really important, I think, that, that that's what you actually do. And, you know, obviously, as I was saying, um, doing different clearing processes where I would clear, you know, pain. I, I have been lying on my back or just sitting slightly upright. And it's amazing how much pressure goes onto the pressure sort of, you know, pressure area of your sacrum. And actually just remembering to turn remembering even though it may cause you a little bit of discomfort and pain but remembering to turn and stretch and do those leg exercises wiggle those toes wiggle those arms start actually moving uh, your shoulders when you can uh, and all all of those things are really important because as you do that what you help what you do is you help to release the physical trauma and the stress and some of the stress is just because you've been holding your body in a certain position so again i just wanted to give it over to matthew so that he has a chance to say a chance to have a drink <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I must admit, I was fascinated by the um, the corset thing that you'd sort of described because I I must admit it's one thing I thought with with the surgery. I I have to be honest beforehand when when I spoke to Penny and and she said, oh well, I was up and walking sort of a few hours later. It, it it's one of those things with with Penny, nothing surprises me, um, but at the same time. I, I was quite surprised, and when you explained that corset, I mean, e e that, I mean that must be even just on its own as a as a as a medical upgrade, must assist the healing process so much because whereas before we we you wouldn't have that support, I, I'm assuming you you literally you're you're bedridden because you can't risk opening. Well, you yeah, the wound or, 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 or stretching anything so uh, th that I was blown away a, by that I thought it was great you used to hold a pillow or a towel in front of you on your chest and obviously hold it tighter and tighter if you get a cough whereas this thing I mean they've only been been used I think for the last you know someone may come back at me with this but I've been out of cardiothoracic nursing for about 20 years, so I would say that they probably brought them in soon after that. And they are the most amazing piece of kit. 
Yeah. <laughs> Whoever came up with this one, as far as I'm concerned, obviously now uh, having gone through cardiac surgery, they need a Nobel Prize for this one, I tell you. It literally, because of course that's the one thing if you crack a rib or anything else, they say, well, you just got to put up with it because you can't splint the chest. But this is mm. the best one that I think I've ever seen. And it's just astonishing um, to to know that don't get me wrong i still hold my chest if i'm going to cough but it it keeps you your chest the upper part of your chest upright so you're not twisting yeah and you're actually your your actual um position of standing is you're standing tall not round shouldered so yeah you you've got a huge amount of support here which is which is astonishing stuff i mean you know very much you know for for me that first level of recovery which is happens whilst you're in the hospital because you're there for seven days uh, mm -hmm. post surgery is when obviously when the physio comes round and actually gets you to walk whereas you know with, with me luke and, and hector were coming into the hospital to visit me so i'd use hector uh, who's who's a bouncy two and a half nearly three year old to do the walks with me so we would do circuits around the ward um, so that he could have a little bit of a run around but also uh, yeah. <laughs> me walk which was, uh, you know, and every door, you know, especially hospital doors, you know, they've got the press buttons and they're opening the doors and he's playing around with that. So, also it made me, you know, made me do more, I did probably more walking in those first few days than most people would do because uh, just entertaining him uh, a little bit. But it was, it's very much a case, again, of looking at and doing it consciously and consciously taking each step and making sure that your whole body is in alignment. Um, you know, you're putting your feet down properly, you know, your hips are following, you know, your knees and everything is actually moving uh, and in, in as much grace as you can muster. Uh, don't get me wrong. Um, there's, there's sometimes when you're walking down the corridor and you think, gee, God almighty. You know, for me, I just thought, I, I feel like I've been run over by a bus. And, um, you know, some of the bruising, because of course you're taking um, blood thinners uh, at the beginning. So, you know, you, you, you feel like you've been through the mill with... Um, Mike Tyson or something like that and you have the bruises to prove it because you know obviously they've had uh, you know they've had to put uh, IVs in the neck and the <coughs> wrists and the, you know all over the place and you you basically feel like a pin cushion but as these start, things start to be removed obviously you gr regain uh, some of the ability to move different parts of self that have been, um, you know, uh, less mobile than, than they have before. But I think one of the, the, the biggest things for me was I hadn't realised, uh, even though uh, obviously nursing wise, but I hadn't realised how dry my throat and my tongue would be. Because obviously I've had a, I've been ventilated and I've had an ET tube down, and my whole tongue furred up, and literally it was like the whole lining of my my mouth came away like one great big, uh, you know, like shedding a skin, and was raw, red raw for a couple of days, which I think was for me in fact was probably the most traumatic thing of the whole thing um mm. but I, I used an awful lot of different um ways of keeping trying to keep my mouth moist and once that started to heal within itself i then turned you know a literal corner which was which was great 
but then it's what is quite amazing is when you you start to reintegrate um, because you've been shocked out of your body and it's taken time to reintegrate uh, with your physical body it's um, finding things really in your face you know the overwhelm of noise um, and people you know uh, just walking down if people were moving stuff outside in the corridor mm. near my room and you just the intensity of the sound and the intensity of the noise uh, the intensity of the smells uh, I talk about all of your clairs being wide open it's just like <laughs> whoa it just um, and even to the stage of how people would talk and how they would talk to you uh, just um, the volume with which they would talk to you sometimes was just too in your face and um, realizing that you needed to do i did some work on it's like turning down the sensitivity of the the class turning down the noise turning down the smells turning down the, the just the volume of everything and i you know people turn around and say oh well you know you always sit there and watch telly the last thing you wanted to do was watch telly the last thing you wanted was uh, listen to music because it, ju it was just too bright, too everything. And it's Sen really sensory interesting. Sensory overload, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolute overload that you're saying, Matthew. It's so true. And it's just realising and having that sensitivity of what people are going through when they're going through it. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see you on the other side of the break. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. We are talking about your life. Ever wonder, is this as good as it gets? No, it could be so much better. At Acorn to Oak, we know you are seeking more happiness, joy, unconditional love, financial freedom, passion, and purpose. Find your unique mojo and live an extraordinary life. Want to know more? Contact us at our website, acorntooak.org.uk. Long ago, you wouldn't think of galloping on a horse while doing calligraphy, and you wouldn't have attempted to ride your bike while typing a letter. Yet you think you can safely operate a multi-ton vehicle while texting? Behind the wheel is no place to multitask. If you want to BRB, drive now and text later. Lives depend on it. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council.
So we're back again and we're talking about trauma and, and sort of recovering from trauma. And it's, again, I think, you know, during the break, I was just sort of thinking, if one of the most important aspects of this, one of the most important things uh, that I would like you to realise and um, maybe take away from this is that, you know, if you're going to go through an expected trauma like this was an expected trauma, uh, and you have time to prepare, please prepare for it. But look at it holistically. Look at it from a holistic point of view. And no, not just yourself, obviously. We think we have a tendency to think it just about ourselves. Think about yourself, think about your family, your friends, what you need to. Obviously, I needed to make sure that uh, Acorn to Oak was going to um, have the radio shows done, which we, which was really easy because Matthew was there and uh, Adam was there. But also getting things like, you know, auto response sorted out, making sure everything's taken care of. Making sure that obviously if you're self-employed uh, and you're not having a wage coming through that, you know, you put something aside so that you're not worried and you don't have to keep on thinking, oh, my God, is the, the insurance going to cover this or am I going to be stuffed with a huge bill at the end of it? You know, it's making sure that you are spiritually aware of what you're going to be going through. And how you want to handle this, uh, what you need to have in place, uh, and then looking at your recovery and knowing that your recovery is going to take you longer than you think it's going to be. Uh, you know, I'm always miss, miss impatience and I will look at things and I, I do have an amazing recovery rate because I am so proactive about it. But you just look at it and just go, you know, if you need to have time off and you need to rest, that's what you need to do. And don't take what author orthodoxy tells you as gospel. Know that you can do other things. I mean, one of the things that uh, was said to me was, oh, you can't have massage and you can't have this and you can't have that uh, within the first three months post-surgery. Well, I went for a reflexology treatment um, within the first week uh, of me coming home. So that was 10 days post-op because reflexology treats your whole body, but it's just having a foot massage. Well, that's what the orthodox people say to me. Whereas, in fact, obviously, it's the energetic component part uh, as well. Obviously, people sending me distance healing, people, uh, you know, doing reflexology on my own hands, uh, making sure I have homeopathy, um, you know, looking at those fears, looking at working through. Um, what was said or what what judgments or what thought forms were being thought about whilst I was having surgery. Uh, all of those things are so important to look at. And it's just also realising that there are people out there who have expertise in this area who you can hook into and just ask questions. You know? Uh, because there's not an awful lot written about, um, uh, you know, post-surgery. Uh, and you do feel sometimes like you're out there on your own, um, you know. But most important is common sense, you know, real common sense. Just, you know, don't overdose yourself with painkillers, but take what you need. And don't be frightened of, of leaning on them if you need to lean on them. So again, um, just saying to uh, Matthew, if there's anything that he would like to add on this. Yeah, I think it, it, it's a very good point. It, it very make very much makes it sort of realistic. I mean, I'm um, I'm I'm into my energy medicine. I'm into natural medicines. Obviously, I use 
chemical medicines if necessary and very much it's like you say it's not saying that you you're not going to use something it, it, using something if that's what you need at the time if if you do need pain relief then that's what it's there for use it it's, it can be very effective for that because i mean it's only really if i had a toothache i would take a painkiller or a chemical painkiller for everything else i don't generally don't need it um but if i did then i would use it and i think it very much like you were saying earlier it's about accept everything and use everything at your disposable at, the, at your disposal but but sensibly so don't sort of overdose on everything because when you do need it you'll probably have so much in your system that the little bit you add to it won't cut it so it's about being realistic and uh, and present in the moment and seeing what, what what your needs are and and, and what the wants are because the want would be to be take just keep taking overtaking painkillers and obviously if you're overtaking them you're gonna get signs of being drowsy so it could make your experience not so pleasant so um i think it's yeah it's very much about being realistic and and suiting your needs and 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 having that holistic approach um i think there's a lot of sort of stigma a, a, around using alternative medicines but boy if it if it helps why not use it um and I, i've used homeopathy in in some of my sort of physical um healing processes um especially one with it with infection i had years ago in a finger and homeopathy was sort of what cleared that um and i think it's 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 almost like very like any healing process whether it be physical or emotional it it's remembering that it it is a process and you can there's going to be good times there's going to be low times and it's almost like that if if you know what to expect then it's not so bad if you, if you went on a roller coaster with a blindfold on it'd be a lot scarier yeah. whereas if you'd seen the track and you knew what was coming up you know it's going to be a rough ride but you can prepare for it and and a little bit of knowledge can go a long way to settling the mind sometimes and the mind can be where the where the fear comes up so you want to quieten that mind and yeah it's knowing that actually yeah there's, there's going to be some rough times ahead but it you'll be all right you'll get you'll get through it um and i think if a lot of people knew that and had that point of view um certainly within like an emotional healing process it's suddenly you can be expecting something you know something's going to hit you at some point but you don't know when and when it does it can feel consuming and if you have the knowledge around oh okay look this is this is just one of those moments i'm feeling real scared right here right now or or whatever that core emotion is and and just letting it flow and as we would say keep keep your breath moving and acknowledge that emotion and just let it be um because when, when you when you stay present with it it's kind of like it doesn't feel so scary it, you, it hits you and you feel it and it's kind of like right okay this is just a few minutes i can use the tools i have to work through this and you work through it and you come out the other side and it's kind of like oh well i've done that once now and i know the process so i can do it again um and it's yeah a little bit of knowledge and understanding goes a long way mm. yeah the the other one thing i just wanted to mention to people is that um it's ama it is quite amazing when you when you've had such a physical insult as this it it's how cold you can feel and mm. it's just remember it's not it's not it's not actually necessarily a physical coldness it's a deep 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 rooted coldness and it it is just ba basically you know again at these moments the best thing to do yes is to wrap up with a blanket if you can but you won't get 
you actually won't get warm because it is a totally different coldness. And that is when you need to be able to hold on to your faith and just know, you know, it is just what it is, you know, rub, you know, this is the time to rub your own hands, to massage your own hands, maybe massage your own feet, you know, and give give yourself self uh, empowerment and give yourself self love because it's so important just to you know to say to yourself good job well done you've gotten through this day or you've gotten through having that chest stone taken out or you've gotten through you know having that iv removed or whatever it is and in touching yourself massaging your own hands or feet or just actually just stroking your own cheek it's a case of you know you're actually endorsing yourself and the good job that you you're doing and sometimes you need that you need your own you know self uh, self cheering <laughs> you, need, yeah. <laughs> you, need, you need to be to be able to say that and you know the one great thing obviously about having this bulletproof vest on um, is is holding the bulletproof vest and just giving myself uh, you know a chest hug and just going good job good job you know mm. yes this uh was was major heart surgery and you know it, there's no getting away from that but it doesn't have to be major heart drama you know? mm. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's you know the drama you know the actual getting the you know the heart is the best pump in the body and getting that pump i can feel the difference within myself even though I'm only, you know, less than three weeks um, post surgery, I can feel the difference. I can feel that there is more oxygen getting to my brain because I don't have the valvular stenosis, and therefore there's more, you know, the blood is more oxygen rich, and that is going to serve me so much. And, you know, it's going to, uh, you know, I'm not going to be bionic, unfortunately, but <laughs> because it was actually, it was, it's a, it's a tissue valve, not a mechanical valve. So, um, you know, unfortunately, I'm not going to be bionic, but I, I, that doesn't mean I can't be epic. And, you know, I've got 30 years of, of uh, life and love and um, hilarity and wonder to have yet uh, before I'm going to give up the ghost so I'm really <laughs> happy and grateful to have had this experience although it has not been very comfortable um, mm. and you know when when you clear things and I'm sure people's uh, ears have come up and heard me talking about clearing statements the clearing statements that I use are four and it's called zero clearing and basically you just start off by clearing uh, the first statement is I'm sorry please forgive me thank you and I love you and that's it you, you repeat those four statements I'm sorry please forgive me thank you and I love you and as you use those statements the the vibration of anything that needs to be cleared will be cleared and it will be zero clear mm. and it is one of the most powerful things it's a uh, again it's a Hawaiian technique um, and I've forgotten the actual name of it it's Opopopo something or other but hey I'll get that right for you next week <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's a pono pono, but I think you. Right. <laughs> 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 My brain is not that finite right now. <laughs> sure. I, I I have to share a joke before I'll sort of make 
my my final point I'd like to make there. When when you said about being not being bionic, I thought next time I see you, I just had this vision of you going here, mate. Look at this, and you having an I, Iron Man core in your chest now. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, <laughs> hey, that <laughs> while, would be cool. While you're there, could you could you install one of them for me? It's like an upgrade. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I, very much hearing you talk. One thing that I've been meaning to mention is I think that. One thing that I think a lot of people suffer from is, of course, the the initial physical trauma for, from having um, the the operation, and obviously you have the emotional and and the mental stuff as well. But I think if people are unprepared for going through it, it's if if you're on it in your present, you you can it can be easy and you can make yourself move and do the things that help your process but if you're not present and on it you buy into the delusion and self-pity and it, that's the bit that makes the process even harder as well again so um but yeah thanks for listening and um, great to talk I'll, to you guys and uh, we'll yeah. see you next week <laughs> see you next week